when you're submitting your music to a music library for the first time to get accepted, you do need to have a full album ready to go. And that means at least 10 to 12, maybe even more tracks completed, produced, mixed, mastered, everything, okay? Uh, about three years ago, when I first started teaching uh, producers how to succeed with music licensing, I used to say that just having maybe a two or three song uh, melody, uh, medley, um, that it was sort of a mashup demo would be enough to sort of open the door for a music library and get them to take you seriously and get you under contract and then help you or basically allow for you to finish a full album or whatever they particularly need. That used to be what I would teach three years ago because I felt like at that point, um, that's how I certainly got my foot into the door of many music libraries and I know that other uh, producers as well were having success with that approach. Fast forward three years, the industry has changed, okay? Uh, there is a lot more, uh, many more producers getting into this business every single day, every single week. I have a lot to do with that, or at least I have a significant chunk to do with that uh, because I have one of the biggest platforms online to teach you how to actually start producing and become successful in the side of the business. However, that means that the stakes and the expectations have been raised. Um, you're not likely to be considered um, as equally as another producer who has the full 10 or 12 track uh, album ready to go. Um, I had a student ask me because again, another course or something else out there is basically giving this advice that all you need is just a little demo to submit to a music library and you can get your contract secured and you can do well. First of all, technically I guess it's true, you know, you technically could get a contract secured by just having a couple of songs ready or just having a little demo that you submit onto them. Um, but that would have been something I would have said three years ago, obviously, would have been a more likely approach for you. So that advice, that information is three years out of date. And I don't think that it's going to keep you as competitive as if you were to approach a library with a fully completed album, ready to be marketed, ready to be served to their clients. Because put yourself in their shoes. If you are a music library, what do you want? Do you want two or three tracks and then have to wait for a couple of weeks to get the full album done? Or do you want a full album ready to go? You can upload it directly into your uh, catalog tonight and start shopping it out to your clients tomorrow. Obviously, having a full completed album is a much stronger approach to take with your music. So I know some of you guys get a little bummed out when you hear that because the the idea of putting together a full 10 or track album, 10 or 12 track album just seems impossible and daunting. And how do you get the, the energy or the motivation um, or the focus to be able to do something like that? Well, that was one of the reasons why we put together Sync 60. Okay, so if you followed along, we've done it twice now. That was one of the biggest reasons why I put that together to create a sort of community environment where we're all producing something. We're all going for maybe a full album or improving something in our approach, our producing, mixing, or mastering skills. But you're not alone when you're in your process, right? So you're going to be following along with other people. So that's what we do in Sync Academy pretty much every single day is people are putting up their own personal challenges sharing it with the group, letting everybody know what they are, and we're giving each other accountability and obviously encouragement and trying to really make sure that all of us are achieving our personal goals. Uh, so the flip side of that though, the really positive thing about sort of the higher bar to really be considered by libraries is that most producers don't want to put in that work. Most producers do want to have just the easy, oh, I just want to do two or three tracks and put together a little demo and just send that off. That's all I really want to do. I don't want to commit a lot to this. Well, so it just takes you a little bit extra effort to completely outshine that producer, okay? So that's what's really encouraging about this is that a lot of producers get weeded out once the sort of standards get raised in the industry. So it might seem a little negative in the beginning that's gonna be a little more work for you up front to be considered as seriously, but see it as a, an absolute positive that the harder it is to get into an industry, the almost certain, the higher the chances are, you can almost guarantee that most producers are not going to be able to cut it. They're just not going to be able to put in the hours, the, the consistency, the hard work, the focus, the dedication, the drive, uh, the clarity on what they really want to achieve and what they really want to do with their music. Just a fact of life. You guys probably know many musicians and producers that are flakes. They get excited about something and next week, what happened to that idea? I don't know. It's gone now, okay? So see it as an opportunity that if you can just stick with your goal of creating your 10 or 12 track albums uh, to get accepted, at least just having that one album um, to be considered by a library, 
you can stand up above and beyond the crowd. And that's why it's also really important, what I wanna really stress in this video, know who you're getting advice from because I get these emails every week from people who are getting advice from various online either courses or YouTubers or just various people in their life. And usually when I investigate who gave them that advice, the person talking to them is not producing music full-time in the sync licensing business. They're just not doing it. So be careful who you get your information from, who you're taking advice from, because this is a piece of advice that had this producer just followed this and just put together a little demo, could have been submitting to library after library, getting rejected or no responses over and over again, going, oh, what's wrong? You know, maybe the industry is just kind of screwed up or maybe this or maybe that. It just was one fundamental missing piece that they weren't getting from this particular person, whoever it was. I didn't find out who it was. But that's why it's really important to vet who you're getting your advice from. So if you guys don't know my story, I've been syncing my music to TV shows, movies, and commercials for 11 years now, actually over 11 years now, okay? Not new to this industry. I'm a producer just like you. I was a nobody. I had no, I still am a nobody in terms of I don't have major um, uh, connections or anything like that. I have relationships. I definitely have very solid business relationships. Um, but I've always sort of seen myself as a sort of outsider clawing my way into this um, entertainment industry, essentially, because I had no hookups. I had no uncles I could call to give me a good, uh, uh, you know, whatever, introduction to somebody. So I had none of that stuff. I literally had to forge my way into this industry just like you're having to, right? Creating high quality music and, and partnering with really high quality libraries. That's gonna be the path. That's the, really the only path that you're gonna be able to take. And when you're taking advice or learning about this information, uh, about this industry, I'm not saying I am the monopoly on great information. I know there's other platforms out there that have great uh, information and advice, but just make sure if they're giving you advice, they do this full time. That would be the first thing that I would uh, really wanna make sure, especially if I'm gonna go learn from somebody who does something uh, or, is, or is claiming to basically have expertise in a particular field, they should work in it, right? And they should have a track record of actually showing that it works for them and showing their placements and showing what the success that they've had, right? So you need to be able to make sure you get that kind of information from whoever you're getting your advice from or um, you know, any sort of career guidance because one wrong little missing piece of advice like that, like this one did, can set you back many, many months and have you second guess, why didn't I get accepted? What's going on? And you just didn't know that the industry had evolved in the last three years and the advice that you were given was from some old outdated thing um, that somebody just didn't know what they were talking about or maybe they knew what they were talking about three years ago but they're not still actively in the industry. I am currently still working in the industry every single day, every single week. I have not given up my music licensing relationships. I'm still producing music. So I have a sort of a finger on the pulse of what's happening in this business, what the current trends are, what's happening with libraries, what's happening with placements, obviously streaming, which is now going through a massive revolution. So I try to keep my finger on the pulse as much as I can by working in this business. And I love just making music, so I'm not planning on giving that up anytime soon. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Please let me know if you have any questions about this issue in terms of getting a full album ready to go. It's definitely something you're going to need to do if you wanna stand out from the crowd and have the best chances of getting your tracks accepted.